Good morning, everybody. Today is July 7th, 2020. It is a Tuesday. Um, I want to just encourage everybody that the Lord is good, the Lord is faithful, the Lord's love never ends, and we have to be conscious and mindful of this reality, and we have to be able to take not just a 5-foot view, 10-foot view, 100-foot view, but sometimes a 1,000-foot view of our current circumstances and situations. Um, because we can become so lost. Uh, so just a real quick thing this morning. I read Mark 11 and I read Psalm 26. Psalm 26 was really neat, really interesting. Um, but I want to keep it short. Um, so much in Psalm 10 is, and, it, and Mark 10 is worth covering. But I want to read to you in uh, verses 41 through 45. Jesus is answering the, the requests of James and John about being able to sit at the right hand and the left hand of Jesus in glory. So, um, the ten, it says, verse 41, When the ten heard about this, they, came, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. So right now, just my thoughts swirling and twirling in my head, I think about me as a father and as a husband. And how if I believe what scripture says is true, that I'm called to be the head and the leader of that household, then am I leading out of servanthood and love and care? Um, that is so important as a, as a father and as a husband to make sure that I'm not lording any sort of authority over my family, but instead I'm trying to actually... Um, go underneath them and pick them up. So uh, a quick analogy of that, there's a, you know, if you watch any of the old Superman movies or read Superman comics, uh, Superman will carry buildings. And you think about it, Superman, if he was going to carry a building, he if he grabs from the roof, he's just going to rip the roof, the roof off. But if he goes underneath the foundation and picks it up from there, it has a better uh, possibility of, of being picked up. Now, that being said, obviously, too big of buildings. There's all these other support things that have to happen. But the structure, it's better for him to uplift rather than grab and pull for, um, for that to happen. Um, also, just think about if you're going to pick up your child, you know, when a child's too young and you grab them by the, the hands and pick them up, their shoulders and the wrists and their elbow joints aren't strong enough. But if you grab them by the waist, by at the hips, you can pick them up and you're supporting their weight and you don't injure them. So as a husband and as a father, how are you doing these things? Like if if you believe the Bible's true that the husband's supposed to lead, he's supposed to be leading self-sacrificially and lovingly and becoming the the servant and the slave of his wife um at, like literally denouncing his rights and privileges and saying i'm here for you and i'm going to do everything i can to make sure you are uplifted by me and this is important i believe because as christians it's so easy for us to be confused and this is going i'm going to go from beyond just the husband and father but as christian adults as christian parents are we wanting to force our kids into submission under us? Are you know the times that we just get annoyed that our kids are changing our schedule or they're you know disrupting us? Or are we trying to actually uplift them? Because we have, I believe, so often lost the view of what it means to be a leader, and what it means to be a leader is to serve others. And this is hard. This this means that whenever people have something that they say against you, you have to not puff up and get bigger than them and try to beat them down in what they're saying, but you have to actually listen and see if there's validity in what they have to say and grow and change and improve because of it. So um, 
Jesus himself was a server and a carer. Think about how he he like went into the areas of town that were the weak, the sick, the despised, the unliked. And, you know, he he went around and hung out with the people that weren't necessarily enjoyed. He had a tax collector for one of his disciples. And he also had a zealot for one of his disciples. I mean, like, think about that. Complete polar opposite groups of people that were called under him to submit to him and to follow his way. And he tells them, you must be a servant of all. So uh, if you're going to lead, you must serve. And we... We see this as being a battle and a question that the early church works through, and we're still working through it now. And so um, my question to you, if you are an adult, how are you using your position as either a parent, a father, a community member, maybe you're on a board or a committee, maybe you're um, a teacher, you're a coach, you're a business owner, Um, how are you using that to serve and to be uplifting someone? Um, a, a servant doesn't worry about their status, a, but someone who wants to dominate through their position will. And so, um, you literally don't have your power attacked if you are a servant leader because you're serving. And I say this as someone who, pastor, coach, father, like I, I many times want to have that position where I feel like I have the power, have the authority, have the privilege to be able to tell people what to do, and they and want them to do it. But like this is where Scripture confronts me and says, Ben, are you trying to lord over and? exercise authority over people or are you trying to serve them and so that's my devotional thought to you as especially to the adults out there especially to the parents are you trying to serve your kids which means know them cherish them and have their best in mind you know the the five steps ten steps hundred steps ahead the thousand foot view That whenever your child has a tantrum or explodes at you, you're able to move two steps back, listen to their emotions, and bless them. So I'll catch you all later. Bye.